player manager. How many do you have overall? I mean, you've been around here like the ancient mariner. The, the ancient mariner? Yeah. So somebody move this mic, we're not too... Do you want to move closer to you? Who's so the TVs can pick up the sound. Keith Hernandez, do you care? Keith doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> having a hard time hearing Keith, you, is, is Ron playing with you or against you in the old-timers game Saturday? He's not pitching One at bat. Ron throws to Todd Zeal against Keith. If I get the you know you're going to get a split two strikes hit early in the count. <laughs> Later in his career, he was throwing split early. That's when I knew he was towards the end. <laughs> What's up? All right. Steve. Look, have you guys made a decision on when DeGrom's going to start yet? Thursday. Thursday. Um, you said last night that it's kind of nice having three catchers. What flexibility does that allow you as a manager when you've got three catchers on the roster? Uh, you can do some things earlier in the game. Um, I think it creates, um, just, just basically you can do some things to take advantage of uh, some situations that you normally couldn't. Mac also had uh, <coughs> turned his ankle a little bit, uh, stepped awkwardly on first base, uh, on the base hit where he hit the ball firmly up the middle. Um, so that was part of it too, getting him out of there, getting some ice on that. Seems to be managing pretty well today if he's available. But it just gives you some flexibility. I remember, I was telling Glenn last night that it uh, kind of reminded me of the days when you had six guys on the bench and didn't have to carry 27 pitchers. Or how many, it seems like we've got 13, 14 pitchers and still looking for ways to get more. I'd like to see them go back to 12. Personally. Brad? Open up a lot of jobs, you got to get rid of that hitter rule that doesn't do anything. It's really speeding up the game, isn't it? <laughs> Buck, never got a chance to ask you last night uh, your perspective on the, the sack fly in the first inning with Rizzo going to third and kind of what happened there with the appeal and what, what you said. Yeah, we, we, we made a quick call. We knew he hadn't left early, so we were going to get the out with Rizzo if he took off, which he did. He just didn't throw the ball. I was surprised he took off, but maybe they got a different read replay. Could have been right and could have been wrong, but once we knew that uh, he had not left third base early, we were hoping they would go early so we could get the out and take the bat out of Donaldson fan. Somebody's ringing here. <laughs> Let me answer. Sure. Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go to home? <laughs> Maybe somebody picked that up and it was my wife, Angela's name or something. <laughs> what else? Tim, question. Tim on, on Sunday, you uh, went to check on Vogelback at third base, and last night it seemed he was maybe running carefully on a ground out. Is he dealing with anything? Yeah, looks like same thing. He's got a little uh, high hamstring. It's like when I went to third the other night, I just said, listen, two outs. Um, only thing that chance you're taking there is a short wild pitch he's not going to score on just get the dug out and see where you are with it and give us some time to look at it because it doesn't hurt him or bother him to hit and uh, so you know I think it's something that he can play through but uh, it's not I mean this in a nice way it's not necessarily taken away from the real skill that he brings he's still is a threat offensively can still hit. Do you have Peterson penciled in for Saturday? Um, we are, um, I will know that when Jeremy gets off the field, which I'll get it to you before the game. Okay, Harold? Yep, we'll get it to you. I think we'll be able to, to lean that way, but I just want to, we want to get one last thing out there. Who's next? Who wants the mic? Right here in the middle. Buck, I was, I was wondering what your take was on with with the series and kind of the excitement level, if there was any added excitement or, or anything was added with 
the way Cabrera for the Yankees has been playing coming into the series, and then obviously Beatty playing for you guys coming into the series. What has that done to kind of boost things already going into the, into the matchup, and what have they both brought to the baseball in this town? Well, you know, I, I can't speak to, to their player too much. It's obvious that he's a good-looking player and well thought of. And But, you know, I was thinking last night, um, I do step back, take in a moment. I was wondering kind of what's going through Brett's mind. You know, two weeks ago he was in Syracuse, and now he's sitting in this environment. And very much, you know, we think that environment is good, if not better, at City Field. And just thinking about uh, what's going to go through his head there on Thursday. Um, I try not to talk too much to him in the cloud. He's, he's got enough challenges going on. But uh, everybody's proud of the people that come up through their systems. You think about the scout, you think about the player development people, you think about the parents, you think about all the things that went into getting this point. Now it's about, it's actually easier, I think, in some ways to get here than it is to stay here. Because it's a hard, it's a critical, you know, it, it, I'm not going to be the guy that's telling him what he can't do. You know, I'm like this will on what he can do. He's going to be a good player. It's not if, it's when. And he's been good for us already. He's helped us. You know, that looks like we're going to get Escobar right here Saturday. Looks like we're going to, we got Nito back. Uh, I think Carrasco is, we got, we got a definitive time when he, we think he's going to be back now. Uh, Dior Mays making progress. At some point, we'll, but what usually happens is somebody else has an issue. But um, without talking about their players, our, our guy, Beatty, it's, it's been fun to kind of see the game through his eyes a little bit. Make sure he gets plenty of sunscreen in the day game. Pretty, pretty pale guy. Tim, back to you. With Carrasco throwing his bullpen today, where does that leave him? Uh, Looks like if everything goes on schedule, probably the should be ready to make a start the first part of the month, which would be the and that series first week of first week of the month. Gotcha. And we've got we've got a definitive day right now, but it'll be the first part of the month. With to follow up on the three catchers thing again, <coughs> how do you see playing time there sorting out? Uh, I think. Very demanding position. We'll continue to take use of all their skills and try to pass the load around a little bit, much like a bullpen. But uh, if somebody really gets it going, we try to stay with it a little bit. But we're lucky to have that depth, and that's why, you know, with Michael's addition, we needed a roster spot with Mazika. But uh, we'll pass it around. Would you prefer to have a clear number one? Well, I think we do. Whoever's catching that night is our number one. Like starting pitcher, I don't get in those numbers. And, you know, it's such a demanding position in today's game. It's just, you know, I can't wait till they get the automatic strike zone in a lot of ways so we can get away from all this stuff. They really irritate people, all this framing. You know, the top 10 umpires, I look at them, that were <coughs> accuracy. One thing they have in common, they're not affected by any framing at all. It doesn't matter how you connect the pitch, they're calling a ball, ball, and strike, and strike. And I think that's where we're headed. Did I even answer your question? I did a little bit, right? A little. If you did enough, I'll answer some more. <laughs> what was your question? It was about if you would rather have a clear well, number one catcher. I think I do. It's just, whoever, that, that night, I don't, I don't think our guys need that either. Maybe they do, and I'll find out about it in the office. Huh? Barry, I think, in the front here. Last question. <laughs> so, to your point, uh, talking to the supervisor of umpires, because of the grading system and the way they're monitored electronically, umpires basically don't pay any attention to pitch framing. It's, no, kind, of, it's kind of a myth. That's not true. But what, from one standpoint, the, the really good ones that are accurate all the time, right. they're not affected by how you present the ball. That's the one common denominator. So the guys that seem like the guys that are low, lowly rated seem to be more affected by presentation. So you know, you talk to a lot of guys, they, they make decisions before you catch it anyway. The good ones. You know, like it's they don't wait and go strike. You know, I think sometimes but you look at it, 
there are advantages to be gained by having someone, you know, their guys rated the top in the game, usually. pitches last night. So sometimes three pitches can decide a game, flip the counts around. But uh, I don't know. I think everybody's ready to have a ball be a ball and a strike be a strike. It's hard to do. They do a great job, all things considered. Especially guys throwing harder and I don't know how they're as accurate as they are. So they, get, they get a lot of leeway <coughs> with the, uh, the balls that are barely off the plate. So yesterday you said you were in favor of the pitch clock. Today, oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Right, and then the two, o- the two other things, getting rid of the shifts and the bigger bases, those are gonna happen too, probably. What do you think of those? Uh, anything that makes our game better and enhances our love of the game. The uh, shifts, whether I like it or not, they're, they're coming. So we'll just make the adjustments. Third game, the players get in. Fans came and we're here to here taking. But uh, what was the other one? Part of oh, bigger three, bases, three hitter rule, bigger bases. I think the three hitter rule too, if you're here to stay. Why? Because that's a major league baseball. No, but why is good. it? Why is it good? I didn't say it's good. But they're going to just they're going to. You had a son that was a left on left guy that flew down here. That cost him a job. What you got? I'm, I'm, I'm headed. To I'm already phone ringing. I'll take you a different time. Move to you, Mike. Uh, when Escobar returns, would you consider him as a backup shortstop option if need be? Or would you have to keep somebody else here who can be? That's a good question. That's something we're considering right now. I would. He has done it, and he's capable of doing it for a short period of time. But, you know, I think we're going to get through this Escobar. He's got a lot of things that uh, point him in the right direction when he comes back. He needed a little restart. So I'll leave that up to Billy about how uh, we we'll go about constructing the roster when uh, Eduardo comes back. We haven't gotten there yet, but he's still you know, a few days away. Just excited about Carrasco and Gear May and all the progress that Drew Smith and McGill are making, and everybody's ahead or on schedule. Thank you, Buck. Thank you, everybody. Oh, wait, John, I'm sorry. I'm not going to cut you off. You had something in the back. John's got one. Oh, John, something we said triggered yeah. a question. Your bullpen numbers are pretty good overall, but they may be skewed a little bit by having us relieved during the game. How do you feel right now about your setup situation, your other relievers? I thought you were like they're skewed by the ballpark you play in. No. Um, I mean, your strikeout rate is number one, but you have one guy who strikes out 50. Well, he gets, he, you know, he can pitch. I mean, it's not like because he's good, I, I don't, I've got to not pitch him. But you got to, you got to include him, right? Yeah. But he, uh, we've had, we've had moments where we've gotten on a pretty good. I'm very proud of the health of him, knock on wood, that we've been able to keep him physically because we've been able to pass the load around. That's one of the reasons why Billy and the club picked up Michael Gibbons so we can continue to, you know, give people the rest they need to stay healthy. So. Uh, We've had moments where guys were really, I thought were solid down there. You know, missing Drew hurt us, um, but we'll get him back. No, I've, I've been uh, proud of the job that they've done down there, other than Edwin. And um, it's hard. Pitching in the bullpen is hard. It's not, you know, you rank it with other teams all the time, which I guess you have to. You, Every once in a while, you'll kind of look at it and say, you know, we're actually doing a little better than I thought we were, especially when you do it comparatively speaking. It kind of tells you how valuable and where we are with bullpens in today's game. It's like chasing that velocity, chasing that plus stuff, which lends to a, a lot of injuries. You know, you know, when's the last time you saw some finessey guy come in out of the bullpen? See how hard I can throw him. Do what my spin rate is. Good. We're good. Thank you, everybody. Okay.